Hi, I'm Dave, and this is my 2003 Montero Sport. It's all-wheel drive that also can go into four high and four low. And I just wanted to explain a little bit why I think it's a great vehicle to use, um, especially at this time when used cars are premium prices. I uh, came upon a, a Montero Sport uh, 1997 that I drove uh, over 150,000 miles and it uh, when I finally um, disposed of it it had a total of 340,000 miles on it and it cost me almost nothing per mile and I had no major problems with it so I uh, thought I would look for another Montero Sport a little newer and uh, lower miles. The 97 was also four-wheel drive and we used it uh, to go places for camping, fishing, extensively off-road, uh, no rock crawling obviously, but um, we never got stranded and uh, it was showed, it, you know, it performed great for what we needed. Other comparable four-wheel drives in my um, price range and model years were probably closest to the Forerunner, Toyota Forerunners, uh, but the Monteros, you can get for three to five thousand dollars less and they're very similarly equipped and that's how i decided to go ahead and get another uh, montero um, and this is what i've done with it and i've been able to go from southern california all the way to maine then into utah a number of times uh, north dakota south dakota colorado was um, Wyoming. This summer we went to Acadia National Park, um, fairly domesticated area, lots of rain, had a great time camping there. So most recently we were in the Outer Banks camping, um, able to get beach access and drive up and down the Outer Banks beaches. Driving in the sand on the beach, there's no, no issues. I had aired down, didn't even really need to do that. Um, had no problem there even got stuck a little bit and at one point I had to pull my son out he put his out back he'd gotten off the uh, beach road sand road into the swamp and the, Mon the Montero pulled him out without any issues so I'm very very con satisfied with uh, this uh, SUV so my Montero's basically my daily driver but I also like to be able to take off and go camping whenever I feel like it. Um, but I keep it pretty stock so that I can uh, take the grandchildren around and uh, my wife doesn't like uh, extreme builds. And so I've uh, been able to do some good up, up, upgrades for camping but, but without taking away from the daily driver effect. So we wanted to show you around a little bit, some of the things I've done. Um, some of the things it still needs. So uh, I put in a RAM holders for uh, my phones and also I have a Garmin InReach Mini in case I'm off, off the grid and I can still get help. And also I can text the family, let them know what's happening because I often go by myself. Um, so I haven't done anything that I couldn't remove and uh, sell the vehicle as almost stock at some point. Um, I put in this um, these lights with these rocker switches for my lights. Also, I have a, a dual voltmeter so I can see the how my start battery is doing as well as my secondary battery that I've installed in the back set up where i can hold the seats down and i uh, made a, a mini platform to extend it so i can uh, so i have enough room to sleep in here i built a platform for my uh, 12 volt fridge that works really great um, and both of those i can remove uh, when needed and put the seats back in and sometimes I even take the seats with me if I know I'm gonna help with uh, taking uh, the grandkids around when we're camping. 
So this Montero came, it was, I bought it with 147,000 miles on it. It came with a hitch already installed. I haven't really used it for towing at all. I haven't had that um, need, but I have used, I did use it to pull my son out of the ditch. <laughs> it worked. In the, in the back, you'll see I have the, I, one of the things I took off of my old Montero was the storage um, add-ons that this one did not come with. It was just uh, the flat back with um, the carpet on it. And I took that out and put these little, the storage platform in here. And that's where I've installed my, just keep my wiring. I have a, an, um, a battery isolator. It works really great and put in a fuse box and then the, all the connections for my switches that go to my uh, AGM battery I believe it's an Odyssey battery and I was able to uh, make this bracket buy this bracket and then um, connect it into the metal of the vehicle um, to prevent it from moving around in the event of a, uh, an accident, it won't come flying out of the back here or off road. Or off roading, it doesn't bounce bounce around, and um, it's pretty. It's very secure. <laughs> As I move it, yeah, it's very secure. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in this compartment, there's more wires, but I also can carry tools. Um, and then there's a few wires, the wire switch wires that go up to the front. This, li this little panel um, houses the, um, it's a, uh, what do they call the starter starting? It's like the jump starter. Yeah, starter box. Yeah, this has a, the jump start for batteries. Um, I keep in here. Um, just in case um, and I also put in this um, uh, always on uh, 12 volt plug so if I need to be always on the ones that come with the Montero are off and the, the engines off so that doesn't help you all the time <laughs> Not for camping. and then over here I have a very cheap uh, tire inflator it works someday I'll get a real one <laughs> about 5,000 miles ago my gas cap stopped stopped shedding just a little piece right here needs to be replaced um, no big deal I also added these WeatherTech window shields so that when I'm sleeping at night in here, I can roll the window down about this far and get uh, airflow and also it keeps the bugs out. Yeah, I have it on both, both of the passenger side windows. I didn't use the one, I didn't buy the ones for the front because they go all the way down here and it just seemed a little much to need it. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is we, I put on this rack bought on Amazon for about $120 but now they're up to $165 but they're pretty it's pretty solid it's rated for uh, over 300 pounds um, and then these racks that lock I bought on eBay for probably 80 bucks at that time and then I purchased these lights ox beam lights um, that installed on the side super easy uh, on this rack which was kind of fun then i got the uh larger light bars for the front and back they're mctunings they were on sale so i bought those they work great they're bright um i did all the wiring myself so if i want to take the rack off everything comes off with the rack um, and they're on quick connects that I can disconnect and then just pull the wiring down into the I can just pull the wiring down into the back storage of the vehicle. Uh, 
Um, occasionally I do that just to wash the top of the car. On the front I have this small light bar that, that attached to the license plate holder and it, it's really good for ground lighting uh, when you're going over dirt roads. Um, everything else just lights every whatever you need. Yeah, the only um, under the under the hood changes I made were I added um, um, LED headlamps, which make such a difference. The ones that the stock ones are like you can barely see. You might as well hold a little tiny flashlight out of the window. <laughs> so the LED lights are amazing and. There's just a few wiring things. I had to drill a hole into the firewall to run my uh, light cables uh, for a few things, but it was no big deal. It was pretty easy. Uh, that was pretty easy, actually. My Montero still has the stock wheels and, and tires that it came with. They had good rubber, and as you can see, there's pretty good ground clearance as is, and I haven't had a need. I'm looking forward to getting new tires, maybe something a little more robust. Um, the, the big O brands, not bad, I'd say. But for what I've done, it's been adequate. Doing and I did also change out the, uh, these little steps uh, from my 97 Montero. They looked a lot better than the uh, ones that came with the 2003, and it was super easy to do, same bolts. Um, to take it out and put it put this on. I like it better So this is a platform I made for sleeping uh, It's super simple. It doesn't need to bear a lot of weight I just rest my head on it and I can actually sit up and Lean against the back front of the back of the front seat and read or watch something um, it's, it's strong enough for that. It's uh, half inch plywood I think I think it's half inch plywood and then I just put some cheap carpeting tiles over the top uh, to protect my air mattress that I use I have an awesome air mattress that's very comfortable and this fits right into the spot right here if you pull the seat up as you can see with it fits right into there and I use PVC pipes for the stands I can very easily uh, put that together they're lightweight um, and I take when I take them apart it stores very compactly and it was really cheap to do this this is a platform I made for my refrigerator I was carrying it in the very back of the Montero um, but just to give me a little more space and also I wedge it in between the front seat and the um, in the back seat and it's a little more safe that way I think but it's also easier to get in and out of so this platform I made uh, with plywood also same plywood and I put um, a little rubber cushion on top to absorb uh, road bumps um, just to protect the uh, refrigerator a little more. And this side I carpeted uh, just for, just to make it a little, a little better if you reached underneath. <laughs> to put the refrigerator platform in, I have to take this uh, back cushion off. And it's super easy. Bolts here. And there's a bolt over here. And bolt. Oh, okay. Put it back. Ah, uh, see. And then the, the platform just goes right here. I cut out a little curve there. I had to purchase longer bolts, one here 
and then these two go right here where the oh, you bolt it, yeah. where the seat the seat bolts are. So I use the same location, the same bolt locations, and actually bolt it down. Um, like I said, I had to buy longer bolts to make accommodate the wood. Um, but then when it's done, it's leveled out. I can level it out, and I just put my refrigerator right here. Pull the seat back as far as I want, and um, it's wedged into the, the this part, this back seat and the front seat, so that it's really stable, really steady. So once I have the platform there, I can just put the refrigerator in and um, it opens perfectly right here. This, so I have e easy, really easy access uh, to my food, drinks. Push the front seat back and it's like it's tight tight in there it's not going to fly around and i don't require any extra straps with it so that's how i take my refrigerator platform i have to take this back cushions off um just as i did with the actually wrong size Start again. Like so. Time to put together the uh, platform stand, which is really easy. You can tell it's one inch PVC pipe with uh, three way elbows. So the back of the Montero, probably most vehicles, isn't completely level. And I just kind of eyeballed um, what I needed for the stand and then cut the PVC accordingly. So yeah, one side's a little trapezoid shape. Yeah, one side's a little narrower than the other. Just pop these on together. can see I um, drilled holes in the uh, two of the smaller size um, pipes and that's where the, the platform uh, I just attach it with a um, small bolt small bolts just hold in place it doesn't really need to uh, bear any weight Push the front seat forward as far as it'll go. Lay this in the into its location, and um, grab the platform. That I, you can see I put a little cutout in it to go around the console, so I have a little more space. So 
lay it on top. I have bolts, holes drilled in the top of this so I can put the screws in. Um, when I'm done, right now I'm not going to mess with it, but when I'm done, it's level. It would, it's level with this back seat. And, how do you level it? Huh? How do you level it? Just by how I push the, how I push the PVC pipe together. Um, once I have it, you know, tight as as tight each side as tight as it will go, then it's level because I, that's why I measured it. Um, and then, and then, I can just push the front seat back against it. And when I'm sleeping at night, it doesn't move at all. It doesn't move around at all. It's solid. Um, might put it in there. Type what I'm doing, what I'm, what kind of camping. If I'm just going by myself, I leave these at home. I don't need them. Um, but if I'm going with the family, and there's a possibility they, uh, some of them want to ride, some of the granddaughters want to ride with me, um, then I take them with me and I put it either, I just pile it in the back here with some other stuff, or I uh, uh, throw it up on the rack um, behind the behind the uh, storage boxes that I use. And they're pretty light, they're really light, and aren't really a problem to pack. You can see at night, let's climb in here. And I can stretch out super easy, plenty of room, and get a good night's sleep. A couple of suggestion uh, I use a sleeping I use a um, air mattress because I have one that I've, I've used for years for backpacking it's super comfortable uh, compact easy to carry around um, but I also get have one of the um, Z foam um, mattresses that I put underneath just to protect the air mattress in case there's any kind of things that are pokey in the uh, back that I can't see the, um, at the time. So I've never had a problem with it going flat. Um, I can get a great night's sleep. A couple other things I've done in here just for the sleeping part is I added a LED light um, in, in the uh, this top light here and then in the back also LED. And I have, um, an, I have enough LEDs that I can put the red lights on, either, on both both the both of the dome lights um, or white lights depending on where I'm going to be some places are, the insects are so bad the uh, using that red light really works well keeping the insects out nothing like having moss mosquitoes attacking you while you're sleeping two summers ago we went to the great sand dunes in Colorado and the moths there were ginormous and um, at night they would just come out and if you had your white regular white lights on and open your doors your vehicle would be flooded with moths so red lights red lights are, are pretty useful um, and especially in summer months and you can see pretty good they're bright they're really bright at night the red that's from the front of the platform to the back of the uh, Montero it's a good 81 inches and if you were going to do just a full time sleeping mattress that and you weren't needing to convert like I do um, well between the wheel wells you'd have about 37 inches of space uh, that that you could use. What about between? If they're gonna do the bridge. Oh yeah. Okay. And if you and if you just wanted, um, you're gonna use a fridge platform like I have and keep your fridge there. Uh, you could expect about 26 inches 
uh, between this back seat and the wheel well. I know some people have built platforms up above the wheel well, which would give you even more space, even more room. So about 33 inches if you wanted to do that. I don't choose to do that, but some people might. Another alternative for the fridge is to, you can easily unbolt the front seat on this Montero. It's like four bolts, pull it out, leave that at home, put your fridge right in that space, plenty of room. I considered that, but I haven't had that type of a camping trip planned where it's just me, didn't need the front seat. Um, and I was going for long enough where it'd make a difference. Uh, sometimes I just leave the fridge here in the back right here in this space and don't mess with taking uh, putting that platform in and it works good there it's just a little harder to get into um, easier there for sure. yeah it's so much easier the way it opens that fridge just a thought on the type of fridge you get um, this one opens from side to side and it works really well with the headroom on the on the montero it even opens completely if i just use the back um, which is the back has even less room to the head headliner um, but i think if it was uh, the type that went from front to back this way you would have a little more difficult time getting it to open and also uh, I know, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't open at all in here. I mean, it wouldn't open all the way in here if you kept it on this. So with this uh, storage, extra storage compartment, um, has a recessed spot uh, that I thought would be really good for the battery. Uh, basically, it pops out and the same, it's the exact same over here. So. Uh, there's one one that I took out and the battery sits down in there really well and um, um, Just just for now I, I, I Don't have a need to build a box over it, but some people could you could do that if you were concerned about the Connections or you just wanted to look a little more finished. I think it'd be pretty easy to build yourself a little box right there also if you use the made a platform the platform would, would go uh, really easily, a sleeping platform would fit really easily over this battery uh, because of this recessed spot um, that the Montero has. Yeah, I thought of using a battery box would be a great idea, and I, but I spent a lot of time looking for one that would fit in this hole right here. And there just were no stock battery boxes that I could find uh, that would work. So I opted to just leave it like this. All my, okay, all my lights are running off of this battery, uh, the, the lights on top, and the refrigerator runs off of it. This uh, always on plug is connected to it right here, a 12 volt plug. And also I have a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter that I don't need to use always it's basically a backup plan in case i need to uh, charge my laptop uh, um, or if there's some random tool i need to use uh, i i can hook this up really easily i keep it in this um, case so it doesn't get tossed around and uh, any of these things that stick out broken i don't want that to happen and since I don't need to, ins I don't need to mount it because I don't use it all the time. It would just take up space in the back platform. Maybe at some point I will, if I decide I need that. Uh, just for fun, I I vacuumed with it a, a small um, shop vac, plugged in, and ran it successfully off of this 1500 watt inverter in my battery, and didn't uh, cause any negative drain on it. Yeah, Andy, ha Andy has another video where it shows we hooked up the uh, solar panel so that when we were at just stationary at the beach, uh, my battery was kept a strong charge. And uh, it was a very simple process. One I'm planning to do on a more permanent basis. 
and uh, you should check that video out. Usually I don't need the uh, additional solar panel to keep my battery charged up because I'm driving from place to place every day. And since this is my um, main source of, of uh, getting around, even when I'm camping, uh, if we're staying at the same place, usually we're driving somewhere during the day. But it would be a good backup plan to have that solar hookup. I use uh, two Plano storage boxes. They're, ha they're actually waterproof. And I've driven, uh, you know, several, maybe 10,000 miles with them at different times. And I haven't had any problem with leakage, but I'll tell you the secret on that in a moment. As you can see, two of those fit uh, really easily up there, and I even have room to throw my seat cushions on the back behind them if I need to. And that's where I keep all my cooking gear, my um, uh, different things I need for camping. It's all my camping gear goes in there basically, and even my clothes, camping clothes. I throw in the two, I have two of these, throw that, all that stuff in there, and um, they work very well. They're pretty solid. Um, they're not Pelican cases, but they're also like one-fifth the price probably. Long trips where you might have bad weather, or perhaps uh, you don't want to get your cases messy with bugs that are committing suicide on your vehicle. I uh, purchased a um, waterproof zip zip up uh, uh, luggage storage uh, container and my boxes fit perfectly inside this. There's not a lot of excess material to flap around. Uh, I took a, <laughs> you know, I searched for quite a while to get ones that would fit the dimensions of those boxes and my rack not too much or not too little. And this one um, has been superb. It's a ridge line and I like the dog. It also has room for my cushions so they stay dry during a long drive with potential rain or any drive with potential rain right. when I go camping. At the campground, I'll just take all this down from the top of the, of the rack and set it up uh, around my campsite and I put anything I want to keep dry inside this um, just random stuff clothes the cushions and it works really good as a waterproof bag thing nice thing about the storage the storage containers my storage boxes are they are waterproof so at the campground I just leave them out on top of the table or to the side of the uh, camp table and everything stays dry if it rains. I've had it rain um, on those numerous times and everything stayed dry inside. So I'd say that uh, Montero Sport or probably even the larger Montero, if you're um, looking for something a little bigger, is a, a great alternative to a more expensive Toyota 4Runner or the unreliability of Jeeps and you want something that's a solid, get you where you want to go, uh, a good price per mile, I would go with this Montero Sport any day.